Hey guys, Coach Justin here from Ultimate Baseball Training, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about squashing the bug. Now, squashing the bug is a verbal cue that a lot of hitters have been taught throughout their playing career, but the thing about it is, it's not what elite hitters and professional hitters actually do, okay? And so I truly believe that squashing the bug causes much more harm than good. So we're gonna talk about why I do not like squashing the bug, and I'm gonna tell you what I recommend that you do instead. Let's just get straight into it. So squashing the bug has been around for a long time, and it's mainly been used by coaches who believe that the swing is initiated by artificially squashing the bug with your back foot, by artificially turning your back foot like this, and that's not what actually happens in the swing. Now, I will say that these coaches, they do have the right mentality in terms of if you want more bat speed, more power, yeah, your hips have to rapidly rotate. So their heart's in the right place and they tell players this because really what they're trying to do, the goal they're trying to accomplish is to get players to use their hips more in their swing. But you don't get there by artificially squashing the bug like this. A major side effect of using the squash the bug method is you never generate any momentum towards the pitcher. So the way it should work when you're hitting is you should have a gather or a load or a weight shift backward, right? To gather yourself, use your load as a timing mechanism. But then once you load, you have to bring that momentum forward towards the pitcher and then eventually you hit against the firm front side and eventually you stay back. But the problem with artificially squashing the bug is a lot of players start that movement right there, squash the bug and all their weight comes to their backside immediately. So they haven't transferred that momentum that way and they're trying to hit basically off of their backside like this, it's not gonna be a very powerful swing. It's not gonna produce much bat speed, much power. So what I like to teach and what I encourage you to try is this. I'm gonna get into my hitting position here, my stance, ball on a tee, right? The pitch is coming my way, so I gather, I go into my load, right? A little bit of a weight shift back, nothing crazy, but a little weight shift back, and then I go forward, I stride, and I get to my launch position, okay? This is what's defined as the launch position. When that front foot strikes the ground, this is a similar position to what you should be in. I talk about this a lot in my other videos. The knob of my bat is facing the catcher. It's not like this. It's not flat like this. The knob of my bat is facing the catcher. Watch any big leaguer and this is the position they get into. Okay, my uh, I'm in a nice balanced athletic position. My front foot is slightly open, about 45 degrees. It's not completely open and it's definitely not closed off like this. All right, so I load, I stride, I get into this good solid launch position and I'm not on my toe, but I'm on the ball of my front foot. Okay, so as I stride, get in my launch position, the swing is actually initiated, not by squashing the bug with our backside, but it's actually initiated and the hips start to begin to rotate when my front heel drops and hits the ground. So as my front heel drops and hits the ground, my back heel is actually going to simultaneously come up. Kind of interesting, right? So watch this. I load, I stride, and my front heel, boom. See how these work simultaneously together? So my front heel drops. If you want to think about squashing a bug, don't squash a bug back here. Put a bug underneath your front heel and then when you get into the launch position, boom, slam that foot down and that'll squash the bug. But do not artificially turn this back side. So we load, we stride, we get into our launch position, our front heel drops and then basically our hips begin to rotate naturally. Then what's going to happen is you're going to feel weight on the inside part of your big toe. As this knee finally starts to come forward a little bit, our heels drop, this knee's coming forward, you're gonna feel weight on the inside of that big toe. And that's how the hips rotate. That's how you really start to develop some bat speed and power. And eventually, so again, we're gonna go piece by piece. Load, stride, launch position, that heel drops, okay? Working simultaneously, my front side and my back side, okay? Then my bat's gonna get on plane with the pitch, and eventually, this back knee, I'm gonna actually get up on my, my toe, on my back toe, the point of my back toe, and this back knee is actually gonna drive towards the pitcher, believe it or not. You'll see a lot of guys, Bryce Harper, a lot of major league players, and you'll see that. They're not artificially kicking you know, dirt up like this or uh, squashing the bug, but you'll see as a side effect, their back knee actually pinches forward towards their front knee and their toe they get on the point of their toe and their toe drags like this. 
So now I wanna show you a quick drill that's gonna help you reinforce solid swing mechanics. I would love for you to try this drill. I like to call it the ballistic backside drill because that's what we want. We want our backside to be ballistic and explosive, exploding all of our energy into the baseball, right? So you'll notice I'm holding some cones here, okay? You need an object, whether it's a glove, cones work great, something that's gonna provide you immediate feedback. And the way this is gonna work is you're actually gonna put it on the ground directly behind your back foot. So I'm gonna put it pretty much right there if this is the position that I would be in if I was gonna attack that baseball. Now, the reason why I say it provides instant feedback is because I'm gonna take regular swings off the tee. So I'm looking out here, I go into my load and stride and the whole bit, and then if I artificially squash the bug or turn that backside, watch what happens. I artificially turn that backside and I kick the cone. Okay, so that's obviously what we want to avoid. So if I put this cone back up here like this and I do it properly, the goal is to not have that cone move at all. The goal is to go into our load and our stride and boom, our backside actually drives forward and we get every little possible piece of energy we can into that baseball. So that's the goal is to have that cone not move at all, but that'll really help you out. I hope you enjoyed today's video and really quickly before you go, I want you to pick up my free bat speed boosters workout. It's 100% free and it's a workout that is designed specifically to help you improve your bat speed five to 10 miles per hour in a very short amount of time. So all you have to do to grab the free bat speed boosters workout, just click on the very first link below this video in the description. That'll take you to a page. I just need your email address so I know where to send this workout. So go ahead and do that now. As always, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we're coming out with new baseball videos every single week. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and last thing, get in the comment section and let me know what you'd like to see next on the channel. That's all for now. Until next time, I'm out.